going to be covering some additional settings and menus in the DJI Pilot app that you'll see when the Matrice 200 RTK and H20 series are connected. In our previous videos, we had the Mavic 2 Enterprise connected, and those items certainly still are applicable with the Matrice 300 RTK and H20 series. But with connecting the more complex drone and payload, we have some additional features that are added to the system. First off on the main screen, you can see the health management system is now an option there on the right side. The album icon is also bigger, but same idea instead of being in the bottom right, it's just a larger icon to click on. If we select health management system, you can see the different aircraft components on the right side. So you can quickly determine the health status of each module by clicking on it. So for example, here, if you click on RTK, it says, hey, RTK signal is weak right now. Move to an open area for takeoff or turn off the RTK if you want to take off. Secondly, we have flight data here records aircraft data including total flight duration, total flight times, total flight distance. See that in the next slide here. But total flight time can be useful when we look at our maintenance rules. Battery cycle count can be useful at 200 based on our battery safety guidelines. And that's when we wanna go ahead and retire those batteries. You can see maintenance rules here. Maintenance service is recommended at the 200 hour mark or six months, 12 months, 18 months of frequent use slash flight time. Click on the aircraft, be able to update and view current firmware versions. Everything right now is up to date, but can go ahead and swipe up on the screen and see the current firmware versions of the various components that are connected. Manage logs allows you to export aircraft or remote controller logs and upload them to the after sales team for analysis. Error records can check warning and notification history. So this is really useful. If you went ahead and completed a flight, you had a notification that popped up that you wanna look at later on, just popped up for a second. Maybe you had to swipe out to focus on flying the drone during that situation. After you land the drone, you can go into error records you can sort by dates, air level, module, and see exactly what that notification was for review later on. If you connect the remote controller to the battery station, the battery station will pop up here in the health management system where you can check firmware of the batteries. You can see the current charging percentage level. And on the right side with the RC connected to internet, you're able to update firmware of all the batteries TV60 wise within the battery station uh, that would require any sort of updates at one go, which is a nice feature. Moving back to our pilot main menu here, clicking on the three bars in the top right, help documentation has been added here. So based on something you see within the health management system, you can go into a specific components and then click on a error to see what information is within the help document. If you scroll down within the help document too, there's also a few in-app tutorials you can go through. Moving into manual flight settings here, going into our detailed settings, three dots in the top right. We've already reviewed a lot of these settings. We want to talk about what's been added here. So first of all, with the home point settings, we have an additional option to set the second controller's location to be the home point. So just an example scenario here, we have pilot A at point A, pilot B at point B. If pilot A takes off with the aircraft and flies halfway, and then pilot B takes over the aircraft and starts continuing flight with the drone, they don't want the home point in a case of a disconnection to be back where pilot A is standing. They would most likely want the home point to be where they're standing or where their RC is located. So within the flight controller settings here, you can go ahead and adjust the home point to the location of the second RC. 
center of gravity audio auto calibration. Mouthful there. Not necessary to do this when you're attaching a standard payload like the H20T, but we see various custom solutions on the market that are attached to the Matrice 300 RTK. So you want to go ahead and utilize the center of gravity auto calibration there. Do have to take off with the aircraft to go ahead and complete the center of gravity auto calibration. Obstacle sensing settings here. So different from the Mavic 2 series here, we're able to set horizontal, upward, and downward obstacle sensing settings separately. And then we're also able, when we turn the system on, to set finite distances for braking and warning. So first of all, our braking distance shows up as red, and that's where the aircraft would be stopping if we're trying to fly the aircraft forward. And there's an obstacle in this case at 10 and a half feet that is detected. The aircraft is not gonna continue flying forward because of the braking distance being set there. Yellow, warning distance. So that's going to give us a beeping noise, notify us, hey, the obstacle is there, but it's not going to stop the aircraft. And then finally, green, which isn't something we set a warning for, is just for when an obstacle is detected, but it's outside of the set warning and braking distance. Everything within the circle, so you can see the little detections highlighted there, is within 52 feet horizontally of the aircraft. We'll cover this more in depth when talking about manual flight functions later on. Upward vision system, same idea. We can set our braking distance and our warning distance downward. You can see the various distances there as well that you can set these items up to, parameter ranges. On the remote controller setting side, we can link to remote controllers. You need to make sure they are on different channels, channel A, channel B. We also have an option within control stick mode to change the second RC gimbal control mode. So if we're in the scenario where operator one flying the drone, operator two operating the gimbal, you can change that to be left dominant or right dominant. One stick is gonna control zoom. The other one will control gimbal tilt and pan. When we're looking in the customizable RC buttons, you can do profiles for multiple users. You can also program button combos for the C1, C2, and 5D button. So if, you, for example, if you do the C1 button and the 5D button to the left, that could be a certain remote controller button shortcut there. Example there, you can combine two together to add more RC settings. To the buttons. We have options for the camera, the gimbal, the flight controller, and the app. So you can see a camera one with our H20T would be switching the pallets, FFC calibration, enabling or disabling the high temperature alert. Nice to map some of those to buttons and save yourselves uh, from touching a screen, especially in colder weather conditions. Aircraft batteries. Many more cells than we saw before. Two batteries, 12 cells each. We're still seeing that information we talked about before. Serial number, cycle counts, voltage, temperature, current percentage. Gimbal settings here, a little bit different. We have multiple gimbals here on the drone in this case. You can select multiple gimbals. Gimbal mode, free mode, and follow mode. Free mode. The camera is going to stay in its current position when the drone yaws. Follow mode, the camera stays pointed towards the front of the drone when the drone yaws. So it's kind of like an FPV camera fixed to the front of the drone. I think an easier way of probably putting this is if we're in free mode and the camera is facing the front of the drone and we spun the drone around, yawed the drone, the leg would eventually appear in front of the camera because in free mode, the camera is staying in the current position when the drone yaws around. So that being said, typically we see using follow mode with a one RC pilot 
or maybe free mode or with two RC pilots where they don't want the drone's movement necessarily influencing the gimbal. Other items here, we are able to yaw the gimbal with the RC controls here. So you can adjust the smoothness there and also the max gimbal yaw speed. RTK, so another addition to the menu here when we're connected to an aircraft that is RTK enabled. RTK equals real-time kinematic positioning. And key things here to note, you can go ahead and turn RTK on if you want to use it, and then go ahead and select the RTK service type. We can use the DRTK2 mobile station or custom network RTK. DRTK2, that's separate hardware receiver that we're setting up on site. Custom network RTK uses NTRIP protocol. So we just need to connect the remote controller to the internet and then input the information and click save. So you can see example here, it'll say set successfully after you've gone ahead and input enter post, port, user, password, mount point. And then you'll see status go from RTK is not connected to RTK connected, RTK data conversion, and positioning will go from single to float to fix. And then when we have that fix, you can see RTK connected, RTK data in use. If you have RTK turned on and RTK is still converging or it's not connected, you're not gonna be able to take off with the aircraft. So kind of think back to that notification we saw in the health management system earlier. Uh, just an FYI in that regard. If you're looking to use a DRTK2 mobile station, you'd select the DRTK2 in that menu. Then we encourage you to check out uh, the DRTK2 mobile station user instructions on our DGI tutorial page for more information in there and setting the DRTK2 station to the correct mode and whatnot. Common settings here within LED, we have discrete mode, turn all the lights off, navigation LEDs, that would be the beacons on the top and the bottom, and then the auxiliary lights, which are different from the navigation LEDs. Navigation LEDs are blinking. Auxiliary lights help our vision system, takeoffs, landings. I've even seen people use them as a spotlight in some various situations. Not, not super powerful. I would not be selling them as a spotlight. Just a fun fact, I guess, in that regard. All right. So that kind of covers everything that is new within the manual flight section, within the main menu, when we're connecting the Matrice 300 RTK, H20 series. Remember when we first open up, that checklist pops up. So you can see now we have aircraft health status for the health management system, RTK status, gimbal control stick mode that I was talking about, left dominant or right dominant. You can see here, left dominant is going to be zoom on the right stick, gimbal tilt and pan on the left stick. Right dominant, gimbal tilt and pan on the right stick, zoom on the left stick. Easily turn on discrete mode as well if you want the aircraft lights to be off. Our auxiliary lights, gimbal status, all good stuff there within our checklist when we're first turning on the aircraft, going into manual flight. Uh, that depending on your standard operating procedures would assume you'd want to be checking this and perhaps more within the menus. So that covers it for this video and look forward to continuing building on this, talking about the manual flight display and functions coming up.